Thanks Notion for sponsoring this video. We've all been there. You're sitting at your desk with a major project at hand. Whatever you do, it seems impossible to focus. Every sound and notification takes your eyes away from your work and you can't help but think about the thousand things you still have to do today or tomorrow or next week, including the things you've done yesterday and that silly thing you told your colleague last month. So how do you get out of that loop? Think of your ability to focus as an onion. In the outer layers, you'll have the employment of productivity techniques. How you select these techniques and use them will impact your focus overall. Next, you have other factors that affect your concentration. Your sleep quality, eating habits, physical activity, your mental health, and the type of environment around you. Then you have the management of your natural energy levels, the level of excitement and satisfaction you feel from the work you do, the ability to achieve a correct life balance, and so on. Improving and balancing out these layers is fundamental to maximize focus, and there are several techniques you can use to help you with this. But there's a specific part of the onion which I want to talk about today, and which is at the center of all the things I've just mentioned, and that is your mindset. You can use whatever systems and techniques you want, but if your mindset isn't correct and isn't in the right place, all of those methods will be pretty much useless. Work and dedication, and because of that, your ability to focus, are grounded in a way you look at the world, that you look at your past mistakes as well as the kind of mindset you have towards success. If there's nothing to look forward to, no enjoyment in a process, all of the motivation will be gone. So the question here is, what can you actually do to regain that motivation back and rebalance and change your mindset? So for me, at least, there are five major things that will have a positive impact, like a huge impact on how you see your work and how you do your work. I feel like when I'm in a rut and I force myself to do these five things, I immediately see progress and I just find that I'm feeling way more motivated to work if I do these five things. And besides motivation, it's not just about like my drive to work, it's also about how I feel towards the work. Uh, I feel that I'm in a healthy place, uh, in a healthy mindset regarding why I'm working, why I'm doing all of these projects. And that's really important for you to try to improve on. So first of all, stop resenting your work. Think of it this way. Your work, whether it's your job or your studies, is part of your ultimate game plan. So whatever your goals are, the effort you put towards your work will pay off in the end. This is true whether the job you're currently doing is like your final destination or if it's just like a temporary place for you to be. Independently of what you're learning, you are earning new skills, you are learning new things, new techniques. Maybe some of these skills are hard skills, maybe some of them are more like social skills, interpersonal skills, but either way, all of those things you are learning will compound over time to, you know, build a better you. All of the things you are learning, whatever those things are, will carry over to the next step in your life and spill over. And also, nothing in life is permanent, so if you're struggling, you can choose a different path in the future. So for me, letting go of any kind of resentment I feel about my work or any kind of task I have at hand is really important to reshift my mindset into the right place again. The thing is, that kind of resentment won't really take you anywhere. So realigning your thoughts and your values according to these different mindsets will have a big impact on how you feel while you're working. I know this is difficult, it's kind of an exercise of reflection and it does come with a bit of discipline, but when you start trying your hardest to shift your perspective, it will really pay off in the end. Also remember to improve your interest. So to improve interest, the secret is to align yourself with your values. If your work isn't aligned with the things you believe in and the things you feel more curious about, you can work for a long time, but it will be very hard to find concentration. And that's because you're lacking the interest. Being interested is like one of the most fundamental and biggest psychological factors in focusing in what's in front of you. Think about other things in your life besides work, like your hobbies or other things you enjoy doing in your free time. When you pick up a good novel, aren't you focused in what you're reading? When you're watching like your favorite K-drama, do you really feel like you can't focus on the show? 
The answer is probably no. As those things interest you, your brain immediately focuses on the task ahead, which is reading the book you've picked until the end or focusing on the episode so you know what happens next. So this kind of selection, this ability of your brain to pick what interests your brain and then focus on those things that interest your brain just occurs naturally and it's very hard to manipulate it. However, because you know this, instead of manipulating your brain, you can manipulate your work a bit to gain back a little bit of that interest um, and become more curious about the things you're working on. So go beyond the basics. Make your work or your studies yours. Twist it around so that you can manipulate whatever you're doing to answer your own individual questions, to add something new to the workflow, or to contribute in a different personalized way to what you do. So instead of doing everything everyone else is doing, just do your own thing. This can be as simple or as revolutionary as you want it to be. If you enjoy design, suggest a new template for Excel tables at your workplace. If you enjoy music, create your own playlist to tackle different types of tasks. Volunteer for projects that tap into your curiosity or challenge yourself to try something new. And also, reward yourself. Reward yourself in a way that allows you to align with those values that you've established for yourself. And don't be afraid to reward yourself either. Basically, just like forget the hustling mindset. You may think it will take you places, but it will not take you places. Time spent working and studying doesn't equal the quality of those projects or the quality of your studying or memorization, and you even risk burnout or even a full-on breakdown. Just allow yourself to do things differently. Implement bigger breaks during work. Forget the 10-minute breaks and go for 20-minute breaks, half an hour breaks. If you allow yourself to recharge properly, you'll be able to do so much better during the time you're actually working. This way, you'll feel way more focused because besides feeling recharged by the end of your break, while you're working, you're also looking forward to the next break. So you'll feel inspired to, you know, go the extra mile and do so much better while you're tackling that task instead of just, you know, sitting there for three hours and just dreading the process of working on whatever thing, whatever project you're working on. For instance, I love the concept of anime doro. So literally 40 to 60 minutes of work and 20 minutes of watching an anime or a show of your choice. Does it sound ridiculous? Maybe. Is it hella motivating? Definitely. Is there something to look forward to? You learn to stop resenting your work. You will identify it with something that can actually be fun. Personally, and besides all of those breaks that I've mentioned, all the interest and curiosity, I really need to feel like the time I'm spending it working equals me learning something new every single day. So I actually keep a couple of pages on my golden coil planner where I literally just add in bullet format the things I've learned, whether on a personal level, on a professional level, or from a business point of view. I have a couple of these pages per month and whenever I perfected a skill, delved into a new subject, or heard about a new process or system I never learned about before, I jot it down in my journal. I call this my discovery journal. It's such a fun, rewarding exercise because it helps you extract something new and valuable from your daily life that you would otherwise ignore because you'd simply take it for granted. You know, this whole productivity journey is huge and there are so many new things to learn about, so many new skills you need to master, and overall, it's such an overwhelming world. So it's really important for you to start tackling all these bits and pieces of information one at a time. And I think that one of the best ways you can do is start organizing things on your own and building this kind of productivity system that is individual and very personal to you only. So I actually have a few templates and resources you can use for this. First of all, we have a goal setting worksheet where you'll be able to plan your goals for 2022. If you know me, I'm a huge advocate for setting goals anytime during the year and the beginning of March is such a great time to start planning. And if you're more into homemaking and organizing, I have a cleaning schedule and list template with maintenance lists by month and season two. And finally, a master to-do list where you can add all data relevant to different categories of to-dos with a place for deadlines and reminders, the ability to connect to other databases and all filters and sorting functions already programmed for you. You can duplicate all of these templates into your own Notion workspace. If you're looking for the perfect software to help you with your studies and your work in 2022, or any other personal project in your life, Notion can help you with that and so much more. 
Notion can be used individually or to collaborate with your classmates, for instance, and there's so much you can do. You can import templates like these ones I've just mentioned, create your own dashboard, write notes, organize files and PDFs, create a timeline for exams, organize sessions of deep work with their calendar feature, and so much more. You can use and explore Notion anytime you want and for as long as you like because their personal plan is literally free with absolutely no restrictions or strings attached. It's the best investment you can make for yourself and it doesn't cost a cent. To start using Notion today and get your free account, you can go to the link in the description box or you can click the button that's on the screen right now. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!